Hey everybody, this is a requested tutorial from one of my clients and he wanted to ask how do you fill that section that's kind of leading from the intro of a track to the breakdown? It's usually back to the root note if you've got your chord progressions in your, in your intro or if you, even if you haven't. The, the kick stops, the bass comes in and you kind of, you've got this big empty section, okay? So I'm kind of going to play the next section which is where the breakdown starts, the plucks come in. But we've got this section. So there's obviously quite a lot um, missing from that section. So I'm, look, I'm just going to spend the next 20 minutes or so kind of building some stuff up. Now, if you've got a breakdown and you start your track and it's got this section in the breakdown, um, you're not going to have any other elements. So what we're going to what we're going to do today is we're going to add some elements that you can hopefully use across the rest of the track. With it being a root note, it's fairly easy. Now, how I get my clients to make their tracks is they put in a reference track and they do the structure, which copies the reference track. And then you've got the breakdown. Okay, and then the idea is they choose a remix pack, they put their bass in, one pad, one lead, get it to sound really good in the crescendo using various methods and using my template. I then get them to arrange the breakdown um, and then do the automation. When they've done that and I've approved it, I'll get them to add the lead layers, the pad layers, and then we'll do the effects. So that's essentially where I've got to at this point, okay? As this is where I am in this, in this track. So, yeah. And at the start of the breakdown, we've got a 16 bar section. It's what's what happens. That's what's happening in the reference track. And, you know, we can use a reference track as a, as a bit of a guide. I'm not going to do that today. Um, I often say use your reference tracks. It's good. I'm going to kind of make a point today on showing that when you get to a certain level and you've, you've used your reference tracks and you've got these ideas, you don't always need it. And I think it's important to show that as well. So, uh, yeah, we've got some pads. All I did was with the pads was take, the, take these pads. Put them at the start of the breakdown, pull them back, and put them out like that. Then I went in there. And I simply flattened the notes out. Right, okay, so nice and easy. First thing I want to do is a bit of an automation on the bass. I've got a little idea. I'm going to start off soft and then for our last one, two, three, four, four bars, we're going to build up to the peak as loud as it gets. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to ES2 and I'm going to use a nifty little trick for semi. So there you go, quite a cool little trick there. And all I've done is I've just, uh, I've used a pitch within the, within the synth and I've just simply pitched it down one octave. So that's a cool little trick.
what I'm going to do is at the end of four bars, I'm just going to make a small change. Now, we want it to fall in line. So, it goes from C to C sharp. Sorry, B to C. B to C. Okay, so that's not really working, so uh sharpens. So I think what the most sensible thing to do is to get um, a kind of atmosphere in. So we'll uh, atmosphere. Nice and simple. I just use a root note, so I believe it be.
how I change the day. Probably with the sound is it changes every time you you uh, you play it. So what we need to do is we need to uh, bounce it from it, bounce, bounce it down to audio. So when when it plays, it plays it as as you as it should, rather than playing back a different. By the way, if anyone knows how to turn that off, please do tell me. It drove me mad for years. But yeah, every time you play it, it plays a different variation. So. Let's just bounce it and hope for the best. See how different it is. Stop dead.
if I'm so free, I don't just work. It does have it. It does as well, it's crazy. Bouncy place is pretty handy, eh? No? No? Put it on my arms, yeah. So put an atmosphere. So in atmosphere has all the atmosphere sound. So loop cloud to so atmosphere too while we're auditioning it. We're not going to do too much in here. We don't need to overdo it. Voice under it. Should be a full loop. Very odd.
So I'm not doing anything particular crazy, I'm just being creative where I can be, I say I'm being creative, I'm using samples and whatnot, but you know, you get the point I'm trying to make. Thank you. 
really too screen to do this <laughs> horrible thing. Sometimes it just don't work, it says it's in G, but for whatever reason, it's not very good. So if you're wondering why you have to export it that way, if you don't press export, it doesn't export it, the BPM. And the correct key, so that's why I'm aware. Does not want to work. So odd. Sometimes production just really fucking blows your mind, doesn't it? Like, why is it not working? Clearly, it was working before. Working now. <laughs> Then. Last thing I'm going to do is see if we can get this counter to work.
trying to just use like different applications to show you guys. So we've didn't use Loop Cloud, we've used some uh we've used atmosphere. I really want to use complete control but um keyboard's not functioning. Stay up in this project forever. I know it's one shot. See if I can use it without my keyboard. Pretty pretty good. Oh, we have to be put in no. I thought it was an A. Um, I don't know why I thought it was an A. Bounce it down is really good because it allows you to uh, it just use the same instrument again. Include it in the tail. So now we just do a reverse.
So there you go. So that is how to fill out your little kind of bridge section from the uh, leading from the intro to the start of the breakdown. So we've got a pad, a base, an atmosphere, um, an acidy kind of sound, or you know, sorry, a vocal kind of atmosphere, two acids, um, your basic view of kick and crash, and then a couple of uh, a down sweep and an up sweep. Um, which is a bit funky from contact. So it just takes a bit of time. I mean, this took me, what, 45 minutes to do, so not too bad. And, uh, you know, you don't need any more than that. So anyway, as always, for more information about this uh, template, about uh, this uh, um, this particular track, anything I've done, or for any information about my one-to-one -one listeners, as always, the link is in the description, but it's tutorials at adamlsdj.com. And, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next one.